Greetings everyone, and great here from another Age of Powers 4 replay. Spot on bottom right side as the English player, we have Lom01. Spot on top left side as the Holy Roman Empire, we have a Lord. Gonna suck on that thing. Looks like this uh, scout does find his opponent immediately, finds some sheep. I think he may have took the sheep that's around his town center as well, so Orn stole some sheep potentially. Or likely sheep. We took out early prey light here. Getting some uh, inspired target unit. Slowly trying to get all these guys inspired to work faster. Now we do have now the Akin Chapel. If I remember correctly, that does call have a giant or aura to provide like 40% gathering speed. Got to make sure you put that in the location you want to put a whole bunch of farms. Does that as a resource drop off? Yes, it does for all resources. Now I do have the Abbey Kings for now as well. This is the second time I've seen this today where the English person is going for the Abbey Kings. I like to see things different, so this is quite nice to see. Abbey Kings will allow him to pull out his king. Uh, the real question is, is this a game of checkers or a game of chess? In which, call it chess because there's only one king. Checkers, you can get multiple kings. You have, okay, that's just a scout there. This man at arms in a patrol move, trying to get some damage on him, but of course there's an outpost here already. Scout there, and we do got the wolf eating up those villagers. Do I now have an archer to pull on the field? Gain some hits there onto the scout. Go for some defensive archers. That kin chapel has been loaded up with a uh what's it called? Uh prelate. Because like as long as the prelate is inside, it gets that massive aura benefit. Going fast forward, looks like both sides just eyeing the eco up. Yells now going for our town center. And the king and a horseman now pushing on forward. The scout is telling the king of where to hunt the most dangerous game, and the king will be more than obliged to hunt that most dangerous game. Man, oh, I'm still here. I think he's just trying to camp this deer. And he's not going back in just yet. The king's leading his sheep all around as well. And we got a small reserve force here of spearmen and archer. In the king to just patrol around like this, why is some pressure to your opponent? Not necessarily to do damage, make sure your opponent stays on defense. It can be quite handy indeed. That means you can start being aggressive with, your, with the economy, not have to worry about it being punished in return. We got another barracks being pulled on out here. He's going for double barracks, one archery range. And the king is going to find Ingle. The king is going to charge. Finds the most dangerous game. Does get some slices there. Hits an, not the same villager. Does take out that villager now. The scout casts, of course, health regen. Plus, the king has a health regen aura. And there we go, these forces are falling on back, Spearman in pursuit of these forces. The men arm is still running around. I think he actually was healed up by the king himself. Oh, let's go and fast forward again, because right now both sides are still echoing up. The king got his uh, kill in. He, they, he may be aware of the small little force down here that's going to harass him. We now have a palace of kings being pulled out as well, very early palace of kings. Of course, does act as a town center. It's a little expensive to bear a town center, but it greases H3 as well. Now you can pull out knights nice and early on. These forces turn back on off. Let's see a bit of fire there. And of course, the English archer says it is trying to retaliate against the spearmen. The English archers can, or villagers can easily retaliate versus spearmen. Let's get some good hits there as well. Another villager does go down, or spearman goes down, not villager. This order still being a bit of a problem here. Going from monastery now. And now we do have to be a knight being pulled out uh, in order to deal with these forces. You now this knight advancing forward, trying to run down this archer, does get a good hit there, and we'll be able to run him down. 
and Are to hear him. Kasha is saddled. Scouts are ready. For Wednesday, the Hesta! I think the scout's gonna be that king's wife. She's gonna be a queen one day, probably. But either way, man arms are still saying hi to the D, deer. Now this king and a scout advancing on forward. Try to find another kill. We do have some knights coming in support as well. Looks like we do have the Zingith Cathedral being pulled on now. Zingith, how do we pronounce it? Zignit Cathedral. Access the monastery. All relics, relics get generate additional gold while garrison, which is okay. Nothing too significant in my opinion. And yep, that's it. Hopefully, it does only have three uh, relic uh, space there. If it was able to support more relics, I'll say that'd be a bit better. But having three relics provide additional hundred gold. Eh. Doesn't seem like a significant to me. It'd be nice. But if it was to able garrison all relics, and say let's like, just say it has an absurd number of relics can be garrison ten, then it would be something a little bit different. This nice space four does receive some spearman hits as well. It does go down. This nice falling back, which you have, of course, the King's Health Regen Aura healing up the knight as well as that of Scout. Right now, village count is 51 to 46. That makes sense because the Palace Kings does slow down your second town center production deployment. Orange is not going for a wheelbarrow. There are 14 spearmen here, which should be decent versus any sort of knight aggression. Both players are now at Castle Age as well. And you got this force fancy for as well, trying to find these uh, units. It does get forced back thanks to these spearmen. This knight does get spotted by the spearmen as well. This knight and scout will engage each other with spearmen to support. Spearmen could probably just stand there and fight, get some good damage on in. And the king's health regen aura will top up all these units here. Health. Yell's not going for veteran spearmen, which makes sense. His opponent's going for heavy in knights. And probably should I cross them as well. Let's see. I just see Spearman in production queue. He's going to have soon to have 30. He doesn't. He does have an archer range here. Spearman, scout, and a prelate advancing forward. Great hits there onto that uh, knight. Let's get a good hit there. We got the knight to turn forward. Got it. Oh, try to scare his opponent with that. But luckily, it was not successful. And this force will be falling back. Again, another ritual there, just a panic your opponent. Knights are advancing on forward. We do have these spearmen advancing on forward as well, trying to perhaps get an engagement onto these. Villagers, but of course, there is the palace king in this area. Sheep following the king to victory. We've got an exotic doggy on me stab, making the ATF proud. And over here, this man arms finally gets cleaned on up. Wait, can a van early? Oh, it is an early man arms, not a vanguard man arms, but that early man arms get some great damage there. More spearmen coming uh, forward to support the spearmen, and that man arms did not get a kill there. Ooh, got a bit of engagement here. It's a little bit of risky engagement. The knight, the king, needs to make sure he doesn't sustain any damage there, so he can. If the king himself cannot have, be affected by his own health regen aura. We got this force of spearmen here as well, but their vision to each other probably very, very pathetic. If I were to switch over, oh, oh crap! They have forced them there. He could have got a uh, conversion there. But if we do, uh, 
This is orange vision because he has a scout there. We go to yellow. This is his vision inside the forest there. So if he would have actually had that uh, monk inside the forest, he potentially could have got a convert there. The spearmen now push on forward. The knights will find an opportunity to advance on forward. A very, very large number of spearmen. No crossbowmen whatsoever. I'm sort of surprised about that. He's fighting against knights. Crossbowmen would have been like a clear, logical idea for a counter. Force us fall back. The knight, the king's almost down. The soon to be queen is still alive as well. As well as the sheeple. And now we've got these spearmen advancing forward. There's 25 of them. I don't think they can do all too much versus these, uh, the King's Palace and the Settlement. We do have a monastery here. Load up two relics. Oh, and he will find that monk. We'll take him out behind that relic. And now the sacred site is being captured enough, which is going to be very useful because you need that bit of extra gold, especially when we go over heavy night play. This one, he's been doing, getting minimal gold uh, production at the moment. He's going for pierce arm as well, as probably just just in case sort of thing. Because right now his one doesn't have any ranged units, so I suppose if he goes forward, he's going to need uh, some defense versus uh, town centers and all that sort. Palace and King of King's Palace should be able to stop these spearmen. They're going to see a bit of fire there. They'll just do fire some arrows so they can back on off with this little grove being created in order to fire their arrows. There's something a little bit exposed there. Oh, he needs to make sure he has the far side of that. Then they can start firing their own defensive arrows. But we pass on the line now. There's some man, man arms over there. And the spearmen just going deep, got these mana arms pushing before. There are full mana arms, no vanguard, no early mana arms. Just mana arms, mana arms. We've got some various outposts here, which are probably meant for more mostly spouting, not necessarily for the castle network. And do a large number of crossbones being put out by Orange, which at this point in time he does not need because right now he's fighting his spearmen. Although he's building out some man arms now, so I suppose it will be good to get them on later on, or even now, I guess. But he's only been seeing spearmen. Maybe the knight saw something. Maybe the king saw something. Yeah. You can argue with the king. No, well, I'm American, so you question the king. And if you question the king, the king dies. The spearmen not going to stand there and fight and engage these whore, uh, knights. He just want to make sure the spearmen are cleaned up so we can take an unfavorable engagement. But any wounded knights can be brought back to the Abbey Kings get healed up. Man arms now being researched with two native weapons, increasing the damage output by two. I really wish to change the animation to get two native weapons. Do not need these crossbone firing away. Get some good damage there onto those men at arms. Does the two does this actually change this so they have like an icon of two in arms? Because I think maybe that's what the land next were technically were. Maybe it was originally an upgrade for the man at arms. Now I've got the palace of Swabia, which is different from the uh, kingdom of Swabia and from Bannerlord. Not Bannerlord, uh Mountain Blade uh Warband. Man arms advancing forward, crossbow in here as well. Trying to hunt down these horses. Remember, their vision is pathetic. It does find a stone mine here, which will burn it down. But may just need to fall back from it. Knights are falling on back as well. The new age has begun for yellow. What landmark did he go for? Oh, that's not the right landmark. We got these man arms trying to gauge these horses. And oh, they do actually change the animation to actually tell us because of uh, two handed weapons. Oh, very, very nice. So they actually did make that uh, graphical change there. Not necessarily change. Bit of extra polish, just leave it at that. 
asked the town center villagers boost 200% faster at 66% less cost. So if you start losing villagers, this will allow you to recover back the game. It's not really a landmark you can rush in order to get uh, increase your villager output faster than your opponent. It's more of a, oh, I've lost a lot of villagers. Let me quickly get those replaced. And make raiding a lot less effective for your opponent. It's more or less just trying to damage your opponent's in, uh, econ oh, I suppose economy, but less so. These forces are now falling back to town center. This time we're going to see uh, get off a lot of arrows. And now we've got the Weingard Palace. You actually don't really see that all too often. People mostly go for aggressive Berkshire Palace. The Weingard Palace, or however you pronounce it, gives you access to Weingard, Weingard, Weingard. How do you pronounce that? Units. Good damage on these forces. does get inside the Calyx King as well. So these guys are still looking a little apart. They do have plus two pierce armor. It's up to a seven pierce armor. And so these town centers do one damage per arrow. That's not a lot to say the least. So if we start seeing some of those uh, wind guard pa uh, palace units, we'll see what makes them special. Because they get access to wind guard raiders, which seems a sort of longbow variant. The wind guard footmen, which they look like the militia in the campaign, the axe wood of militia as an icon unit. Of course, the Weingard Raiders, three horsemen and three knights, but those are not Weingard versions. And Weingard Army, which includes two spearmen, two crossbowmen, and trebuchet, which gives you a pretty cheap trebuchet, honestly. You can probably need primary to put that up for the trebuchet. But let's see if we can see in those uh, unique Weingard units. It also means you can get those like variations without needing to get the elite upgrades, probably. So I'm hoping he's going to pull them out relatively soon because I want to see them. Because I really don't know what's unique about them. Man arms getting some good hits there on the man at arms. They're of course elite versus non-elite. But of course the crossbow do some great work. Do I hear a cannon somewhere? Yes, we do see a bombard hitting the heat. Spearman and man at arms pushing way forward. Keep is now being researched with the castle network of castles and unique technology. And let's keep that palace selected. I want to see him deploy out these unique units. The palace is, or this keeps now receiving quite a bit of fire. There's now two bomb bars on the field. And they also got some uh, villagers being deployed out here. The wolf is trying to stop this uh, horseman, and he does hold ground a horseman here just to stop him from closing that gap. Very, very nice. Man at arms advancing on the back, trying to bring them back to the uh, Abbey of Kings in order to get some good healing there. And he's not putting into those bannered armies yet. Yells not eyeing for counter attack. He is at pop cap, so when you're at pop cap, you best attack if the opponent's not attacking you. The village account is in favor of a yellow by sniffing out. Remember that uh, Palace of Swabia result gives him a lot of villagers, so you quickly close the ranks there with a bunch of villagers. That's the primary way to free to each player's population. You can see here down by 50 from uh, max population. You see here he's at max population. Guess what the difference is? 50 villagers. Also, Orange is missing some technologies. And no uh, Wine Guard Palace units. Bomb Wars of 4 trying to stop the stone from being clean. These Man at Arms getting some good hits onto these uh, Spearmen. But of course, there's also no Man at Arms here as well. It's like Orange will pull the line there, just had a superior number of mana arms versus opponents. Yeah, I can just click off a wild there. 
22 melee damage bludgeon versus the 16 damage for sword. So those mana, uh, two handed wielding mana arms are significantly stronger than the other mana arms. We do also have uh, 5 8 armor versus opponents of 9 9 armor. Though, then again, the Holy Realm Empire player has not deployed out any melee armor. Which is very, very important. Or just to get one now. He's getting for a lot of research mode, so he's mass researching. Which is a bunch of bombards. Gold mine will go down. And you got now hand cannoneers as was crossbow when we on out of the field. These forces are quite well armored. These longmen will have severe trouble. Now these can uh bombards will be going down these man arms. Very, very nice. This crossbow needs to make sure they maintain the distance from these uh elite mana arms. Mill will go down as well. They have a small force here just going around bashing down wall summits apparently. Orange has also claimed up this gold mine here. And we are going to see the Vanguard footmen, so we're going to see what's special about those guys. It look the icons, I generally believe it looks like the militia units from the campaign that you fight against. So I wonder if those were supposed to be some sort of unique unit. Guiding ramps receiving a bit of fire there. And now let's see the wine guard uh, footman. Do you see some wine guard footman there? Specialized men arms with high health and pierce armor. So they're anti range ones. Plus, they do have two inherent less uh, melee armor. Slow movement countered by crossbowmen. They do also have 22 attack as well. So they have the similar, they have the same uh, attack as the. Uh, as his bonus mana arm, so that is quite significant. We have also two melee attacks with different attack speeds. I'm not sure which one uh, does which. Mana arms do charge over that ridge, and one of the melee attacks on the wide guard uh, footmen do hit faster than his bonus footmen. These mana arms are just going to just charge into his bonus base. Now we got these uh, wide guard footmen trying to engage these uh, mana arms. Of course, they are a little bit slower, or maybe not. Actually, no, they're a little bit faster than the. Uh, no, they're about the same speed. We have some of these uh, a lot of these elite long bowmen. Getting some damage there. We've got some hand cannons and mixed well, but he needs to stop building long bowmen. He's fighting against mana arms. Do not have more of the uh, special wine guard footmen. Wind guard, wine guard. I really don't know how to do this. Now I'm pushing myself even more. Pretty good that gold there. Orange and Mania push forward and get that gold claim. That still mine has been denied. We got these elite force from Charging Force trying to deal with these villagers. So we got a monk here as well. Does have a good number of hand cannons in the mix as well? And we've got these uh, regular man arms, getting some hits there onto that wall. There's those two uh, wine guard footmen pushing way forward. They actually don't have the uh, level of accuracy, like if they're like elite or non elite. So they are not affected by those elite upgrades. Gets those guys cleaned up, up and take hand ears. These horsemen are getting overwhelmed by this various uh, men of arms and hand cannoneers, very both types. These horses are facing the four as well. Lancer knights are trying to deal with this force. Uh, these villagers have already pretty much claimed all this gold. This gold is about to be completely cleaned on up. Elite Knights are trying to advance the fort, trying to get some good raiding done. 
Right now, Orange has a superior uh, military number to his opponent, as Yellow's just trying to force his opponent back in the base by raiding everything. Max is trying to go for these uh, mills here, which is very, very good. We do also have, oh, Yellow's claimed this gold here, and placing a keep here denies his opponent from able to uh, get trade going as well. More of these villagers do going down. Man at arms and wine guard uh, trying to deal with these knights. Baganelles is a good item for the Holy Roman Empire player to play, play out against this infantry force. Got banner rams now battering away. There's no uh, way to get these units on top of walls either. Good damage there. Man of arms are able to overwhelm one of these uh, Maganels. The other one, they will be cleaned on up, but able to the other one. We got a force of the Weingard Raiders, which are just knights and horsemen. Knights are only knights, horsemen are only horsemen, so no upgrades on them. Yellow's just streaming in more and more forces right there, trying to deploy ways. Orange has a pretty good uh, shooting gallery right there. He put these hand candies on top of high ground. Adam Ram does get some good hits there. Mostly got through that wall there. He may be able to destroy that uh, wall. Does destroy on the wall there. Yellow's now streaming forward with these infantry forces. Hand cannoneers, man arms, charging up to defend this area. They got these forces sort of streaming on in as well. Yellow's just trying to be everywhere as once. Try to overwhelm this one with just sheer numbers and frustration, probably. Orange play has a massive. The yellow player has a massive reserve of resources. Doesn't have all his pierce, uh, may, uh, pierce range damage. Now it's getting that now. Orange is missing a lot of upgrades, including melee armor as well as melee attack. Yellow could stand to have less villagers at this moment in time. He has probably too many at the moment. He has plenty of income. He's only to deploy out a minimal army. He's just trying to stream on into his opponent. And Orange is having trouble maintaining the front line. More and more of these forces pushing my forward, trying to find more breaches. Orange is trying to build a whole bunch of uh, outposts here for his castle network. More and more knights being put up by yellow. He's just going to stream and attack his opponent with just sheer numbers of knights. Just going straight to his opponent's base, just trying to frustrate his opponent. We do not have a king here to defend his people. Knights, however, still streaming on in. He's having severe trouble. He needs crossbowmen, honestly. One of these outposts has been complete. And he has to pass the castle network. Losing a large number of villagers now. Orange now has half the villager population of his opponent. He does have a small flow of resources, but not enough to really compete with his opponent. Yellow's now advancing forward with some keeps around his opponent's perimeter. And here's our force of good. They have two damage for range. Don't care what they shoot at. But also maybe a little bit more economical, but we may not have the research for them. But the elite research. Yeah, I was not trying to fall back and regroup. So we got these nice, nice riding around. Orange needs to pull out more villagers. He has villagers queued up on his town centers. He's been solely relying on two town centers uh, production. And that's it. He's not going to recover quick at all. It's going to take him... Say both of them go out uh, 15, get up to 30, getting him a little less than 100. The villagers take 20 seconds. It's going to take him. Uh, what? 15 divided by 3, 5 minutes? Which doesn't even have that time. He could. He also needs these guys back to the Abbey Kings to get these guys healed up. They're very, very wounded. Do you not have a siege workshop being plotted here? Do you see a four town center for 
emergency repair capability? We do not. Got more fortified, more cannon placements. Lots of cannon placements being pulled on out over here. And this is farming line. You could retest some of these villagers to be on the far side over here. Got a nice mixed force here as well. Including some land schnecks, which are a light unit. But, so I guess since he has a gun for crossbowmen, the hand cannons will do just fine against them. Or it's not going out a big wave of battery rounds. It's a good idea, but these villagers can say no to them. Got these uh, man arms. Getting some good damage there onto these uh, man arms. Wide guard footmen charging forward. They're, of course, a very good unit. But these magnos getting some great hits there on these forces. I think Orange does have a superior number here. Outpost being pulled on out. These uh, battery rams has been forced back. We do now have some bombards being pulled out as well. More outposts being pulled on out. We got. What the hell? There are six Maganels right there. He doesn't have the population room to support that, does he? He has ink income, that's for sure. In fact, he has nearly 15,000 food. Pretty close to getting uh, enough resources for our wonder. Yeah. Those walls do go down there to the cannon placements, as well as the bombards. He's now going for no towns up here for emergency repairs. Emergency repairs is a ability he has not used in that game, but of course, can give his guys additional help. Did I just hear a monk? Arms are trying to charge and forge and deal with these villagers to save his uh, Madden Rams. But let's keep moving. We'll stay up. He has not researched any of the increased health uh, buildings. Yeah, he's not going for a port architects now. Yells now claim the gold on the front line. He has plenty of gold reserves. It's simply denies the gold. Wine guard pass going down. Trying to the wine guard army. The trebuchets will be very handy indeed. But no longer. Can can nearest getting some great damage there onto these land schnecks. Last of the battery rounds will be cleaned on up there. He has not set the building ablaze. The villagers have gone down. A couple more torches and he will set the keep ablaze. Now he can punch it back on off. Yellow has a massive army here. Yellow has lost some villagers. Actually, the boom for yellow. So many Maganels here, rip and park these uh, men at arms. Elite force will be streamed on in as well, trying to go straight for the villagers. Long woman advancing forward with some of the uh, hand cannoneers. And some of this infrastructure starting to go down. Lanish decks are, of course, vulnerable to the longbowmen. They actually start out with no fierce armor. Great if they're into some of those forces, but there's just too many Maganels here. This entire infantry force is doomed against those Maganels. The man at arms do find an angle to take out one of the Maganels. Yell's not going for forward keep. If he out four town centers as well, then that's going to be a very, very hard to kill keep. This keep has burnt down. It is a couple of mana arms up on this wall. Yellow streaming in more and more forces here. Yellow can outlast opponent in economic wise. The English player is down to 100 population. He's down to 20 million units. He's lost a number, large number of villagers. Got these still, these forcemen going around uncontested. He's right now his opponent. I mentioned before, and he's trying to overwhelm his opponent by hitting multiple angles once, and he's doing a good job of that even now. More and more of these mana arms charging forward, battering rams cleaning up these keeps. So we've got a bombard tower here. And we've got some now yellow battering rams. Now some of this other infrastructure is starting to get hit as well. Venus pose flanks. 
or just advancing forward, trying to deal with these various mana arms. But not these mana arms are not going straight for the uh, mills. But the problem is, there's nobody actually collecting the mills at the moment. Going for the town center wouldn't be half bad. He actually has built another town center there. If you see more fire, we got these. Uh, Main arms getting off some mega nails. Got these bomb bars, fancy boy. There's a large, large wave of bomb bars. He should really just blow out wonder just in case as well. These players down to his minimum reserves. He's low on food, low on wood, low on gold, no stone. And now with these bomb bars here, all of his bones. All the orange infrastructure will go down. He does have more wave of battering rams there, but does not enough have does not have enough escort. <laughs> and orange total goes on down on the bomb bars, and orange has backed out of the game now. This is Andre saying, "Thank you for watching, and on to the next replay."